Hi everyone, in this problem we're going to determine whether or not this series converges or diverges. And if it converges, the question actually wants us to find the sum. So the first test uh, that we should typically use uh, when we're looking at infinite series is something called the nth term test. Now obviously if you have like a geometric series where you have like something to the nth power, uh, then that's pretty obvious, you, you take that approach. But this is not really something to the nth power. This is the nth root of two, so uh, it's certainly not geometric. So the nth term test is a really good test to try. So it basically says if you have uh, an infinite series, say the sum of the a sub of the a's, and you take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, and you don't get zero. So if you take this limit and you don't get zero, then the series diverges. You have a divergent series. So again, it says if this limit is not zero, then it diverges. So if the limit is zero, well, no information. Some textbooks call this the nth term test for divergence, just so that there's no confusion. People often use this incorrectly. Um, you should never say something like converges by nth term test. That's actually impossible. All right, so we'll start by taking the limit of this here. So let's take the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of 2. This is really equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 to the 1 over n. So to take this limit properly, um, what we can do is we can use logarithms. So I'm going to let y be equal to 2 to the 1 over n. And now we're going to take the natural log of both sides. This is just a technique. So ln of y equals ln of 2 to the 1 over n. So if you're wondering like how I knew to do this, it's just because, you know, probably by the time you're doing a problem like this, you've seen this limit before. So you say, oh yeah, this is one of those limits where I have to use logs to bring the exponent down which is exactly what we're going to do in this next step. We're going to bring down the 1 over n. So we have ln of y equals 1 over n times the natural log of 2. So now we're going to take the limit of this. So let's do it. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity of the natural log of y. Well, that's the same thing as the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n times the natural log of 2. Well, the natural log of 2 is a constant, and then so 1 over n approaches 0, so this equals 0. So what have we shown? We've shown that the natural log of y approaches 0 as n approaches infinity. So if you exponentiate this, you have e to the natural log of y approaches e to the 0 as n approaches infinity. By the way, the reason you can do this, the reason you can just exponentiate like this through the limit, is because e to the x is a continuous function, right? It's not something that's often talked about, but that's, that's what's happening here. You don't have to say it, uh, but just know that that's why you can do it. And look at this. You get cancellation here, so y approaches 1 as n approaches infinity. You might say, well, what's y? Well, y is what we started with. y is 2 to the 1 over n. So we're basically saying that the limit as n approaches infinity of y is equal to 1. In other words, the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of 2 is equal to 1. And that is not equal to 0. So now we can invoke the power of the nth term test. So our series diverges by the nth term test. It's really important to um, state the test, right? You want to state the test, you know, show the work, let the reader know the condition, and then specify why uh, the condition works and what test you are using. And that would be a complete solution. I hope this video has been helpful.